Uh, my name's Greg. I'm here with Andrew. And uh, we're here actually in place of our CEO who sends his apologies. He couldn't make it tonight. Perhaps this is one uh, couple of things we might do tonight. The first is this might be a little bit of a parable of a tech firm at the other end of the corridor, the other end of the innovation corridor, and what happens after 10 or 11 years of hard work. Many of you are on that journey. Many of you maybe past that journey and on farther. But in any case, we've been at it for 11 years, and we're going to tell a story about data for cities, hence the topic, uh, using data to improve transportation experience. Story actually has two parts. The first part is about what we're doing on the Bloor bike lane, and which is our uh, uh, beginning product, I guess. And we'll talk about our other product, which is a complementary product. For myself, I've been involved with MyoVision for actually 11 years. Curtis came out of the Accelerator Center at the University of Waterloo, and I was assigned as his advisor. Funny story to the previous speaker. Uh, prior to that, I was assigned to Kick. <laughs> so I was working with Ted Livingston, and I have to admit that uh, maybe it's age and stage, I didn't quite get it. I knew Ted was cool, I knew Ted was really smart, and I knew he had something, but I'm more of a B2B guy, and obviously Kick is more of a business to consumer kind of thing. But I've advised Curtis uh, coming out of the Accelerator Center five years ago, excuse me, five years ago, and then I joined uh, last June. Andrew's employee number 14 of 150, and uh, that brings us here today. So we do appreciate what the mayor had to say, and hopefully part of our story uh, supports that. So very quickly, we are 150 people, mostly in Kitchener. Uh, we're moving to a new space soon, also in Kitchener, and we have seven employees in Cologne, Germany. Uh, perhaps what's notable on this slide is half the intersections in North America have been counted with our product, which we call Scout, the same one used in the Bloor bike lane. So in Ontario, there are some big problems with transportation. People talk about smart cities, and transportation, social structure, education, uh, economic development, all of these things are part of smart city, but certainly transportation is one of those big bogeys. And you can see the kind of numbers that are represented in Ontario. The good news is that 10% of the congestion problem can be solved by better information at intersections, which has really driven us for the last 11 years. And you can see at the bottom part of the chart, if you solve Congestion at the intersections, obviously you bring down congestion, you drive up livability, you drive up economic development, and you have a chance to reduce greenhouse gas. So if Curtis were here, he would say that all the data that we require is already there, it's just a question of unlocking it, and that's really been our mission for the last 11 years. So maybe just to go back to uh, Curtis's history. His father was in the traffic data collection business. Curtis, like maybe many of you, if you're engineering students or summer students, stood at intersections and worked one of these devices. And so if the challenge is to figure out how many trip, uh, cars or vehicles are going through an intersection, how many are turning left or right or going straight through, what's the volume, what's the type of vehicles going through, are pedestrians or bikes in the mix, what sort of different types of vehicles are going through. Do all of that on that particular clicker board. Do it over a 12 or 24 hour period, which clearly means not one person is going to do it. Do it in bad weather, et cetera. So the issue with the, the way that things were collected is it was really practically impossible to do a fully accurate and verifiable job, which I'll talk about in a minute, and certainly might have even been considered inhumane. And so, we uh, adopted or created the Scout product. Scout is essentially a video collection unit. It's a camera that goes up on a pole. It's uh, um, computer vision enabled processing. And it's a portal environment to present the data along with the video. The mayor mentioned that one of the things he likes about working with MyoVision, notwithstanding the fact we're investing our time along with them on this exciting project, is he has a chance to get data before and after, and secondly, have the video to verify how the counting was done, and then thirdly, he can, evidently, they're gonna look at the video to get other hints as to what they might do to tune the bike lanes. And so, it leads to, and we'll skip this video, but the piece on the right is a little bit about how computer vision works and how you mask and so on and so forth. doesn't want to go forward. Sorry. Does 
anybody know a technologist? Yes. <laughs> Hang on. It's Lenovo's fault. Yeah. Interesting. Let's give it a try. Yeah, go ahead. There we go. I think we can back in action now. Yeah, I just want to back it up though. There. Good. I wanted to show this slide because this is a screenshot of the Bloor bike lane. And Essentially, if you look at the graphs across the top, the predominant dark blue piece are the cars. The purple that overlays the top of that are the bikes. And there's some thinner lines for other classifications of vehicles that make the vehicle piece a bit more granular. And so all that's doing is over a period of time, what was the traffic volume going down through the bike lanes? And then as you can see, the supporting video is there to, uh, 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 to corroborate the story. So better data. Better decisions, better outcomes is our, is our theme. So what we wanted to do today, and forgive me because I wanted to introduce our other technology and what we're working on because we're continuing to improve. Um, so do you want to skip the demos then? Okay. All right. So we will talk about our Spectrum product and show you just briefly the, uh, the demo piece. Andrew, go ahead sure. if you can bring that up. Yeah, so if you think about the idea of using better data to inform better decisions for better outcomes, how can we take that a step further? So we've got this day in the life of uh, a roadway captured with the Scout product, but how do we do that on a, on a regular basis? So we developed, this is the extension of what we've been doing, a new product that we have that basically captures data at intersections and streetscapes all the time. So it's an internet connected device, captures data from existing infrastructure, the streetscape's telling you tons of interesting things, we have to capture it. And so it's captured through this hardware device continuously streamed up to the internet for constant storage where analytics take that data and derive insights from that. And so for the sake of time, we'll just jump right into a live demo we have right now at the region of Waterloo. And so what you can see on the screen right now is an intersection operating in real time. Those blinking lights might not mean too much to you right now, but that is data that's captured by the system. And so this informs important decisions if you're a traffic planner about when vehicles arriving at the intersections, what's happening, how many vehicles arriving, when do they leave? Was there enough green time at the intersection? And was the intersection operating effectively? So the fact that we have this growing database, and think about the 2,000 intersections in Toronto, it's tons of information that through software analytics and, and artificial intelligence can derive insights automatically based on the information that the city inherently is telling you. We just haven't found a way to capture it. And so now this is the way. And so quickly, there's a number of different reports that can be pulled through the data. So it's not data for the sake of data, it's meaningful data through software tools that, that build upon that. I'll quickly walk you through just a short little story here. So if you're an engineer and you want to say, why aren't vehicles traveling down the roadway? Oftentimes, they might be getting caught at a red light. And you can see when this is happening by polling and asking that of the data set. And so you can see some charts that basically just pull that data from the cloud automatically and compile it into a report based on what the city would be looking for, or what the user would be looking for. They can then do a deeper dive to understand where areas of green time aren't being allocated effectively. And so what happens is that sometimes you've been at a red light, or you've been at a light and it's going green and you're traveling through and it's just not enough time for all the vehicles to clear. And so what you're seeing on the screen by capturing the data and, and using it in these reports, we're seeing areas where dots in the upper right hand corner represent uh, green time where there's not enough for particular movement but dots in the bottom left hand corner represent wasted green time. So now the data is telling us that there's optimization events that can occur here and therefore they should take place for the improvement at the intersection to exist. And so it's all based on the data that gets captured through that hardware device, which is an extension of the traffic counting product we use on the Bloor Bike Lane project. And so as this progresses, we're asking the data to tell us stories. We keep moving on in terms of having the data tell us those stories automatically. So if there's something worth knowing about, we can have the data tell us that. Um, through software tools and database alerts. And so it's pretty exciting the stuff we're working on. We have an open data API, so if there's anyone in the audience here that needs access to city traffic and signal information and that can develop upon that, we've got great tools that will help out in that regard. Um, and so we're doing ex some exciting stuff here to improve the transportation experience for everyone. So thanks for letting us show up and, and uh, showing you what we've been working on. Questions? The first one there. Oh, one, one caveat. Yep. We can't ask any questions about the results of the Bloor Bike Lane study. So, I don't know, you know, 
Yeah. I know, uh, but we can't, you know, I've, I've Alex has given us our get out of jail free card. Yes, we're, so, we're just there to provide solid data. It's over to other people to make decisions based on it. Yes, question. Greg, how is it different from Waze? I mean, I know you have a device that's gathering information, but even Waze gathers real-time information based on the commuters. So how is the backend algorithm? If you can talk about it, I don't know how much yep. you can talk about it. Yeah, so, so Waze is just pulling your, your cell phone information for the most part. This device is actually capturing that real data from detectors that are already, already out in the city. So those detectors work at a single intersection, um, but that's where that data becomes, it, it stops there effectively. Um, so what we're capturing is that information coupled with travel times. There's a device that we have here that actually picks up the presence as you're driving through the network. So it's kind of higher fidelity data in that regard, whereas the Waze data is more of an approximation. And who's going to be the consumer? Like, is it going to be the, the government, I mean, as in the roadways or transport or the government, or is it going to be people like you and me driving on the road using this information? The, the fact that there's an open data API, it could be. A consumer play. Uh, there's an application that one of our cities is developing around uh, uh, visually impaired people getting the data through the API and knowing how the intersection's performing. But back to Andrew's point, Waze will tell you travel time, etc. This is telling you how an intersection is performing. How many cars are arriving on red? Is there available green time? And it combines the information from the controllers for the signals and the detectors in the road and anything else connected to the intersection. As for the consumers of it, or why don't I say our customers are really the cities who want to better manage their traffic infrastructure, particular intersections or entire corridors. The Scout product was a portable. This is a permanent. And you pick those intersections you care most about and manage them in real time, including changing the signal timing. The use of the data is the city's call. And if they want to distribute it to people to build applications on for citizens to be engaged, uh, then that's their call because we're not in the data selling business. We're in the providing it to the city business. Thank you for the question. One more question um, over there. Yeah. I'll take the other one offline later. If, uh, if that's, yeah. I'll repeat the question after you say it. So, so the question was, besides the data that we're collecting, the video data, are we collecting other things like near misses? Do you want to comment on that? Because yes. we're working in partnership with uh, the university. So we have a computer vision team that's working on those types of tasks all the time. So it's not fully productized, but they're exploring different ways to take the data, apply video analytics to it, and derive new information from that. One of the things is like what you mentioned there, so conflict analysis can be automated and pulled out through that video information automatically. We just have to keep building the computer vision side of things to, to allow us to do that. So we've got 70 or so engineers tasked with these things on a daily basis, so that kind of thing is keeping them busy. Cool. And I would add the, the open API which is more the Spectrum product, but we can make the Scout data available as well. It allows analytic engineers or software engineers at the city to go cross-reference with what they want. They might want to cross-reference with weather or their own crash data, et cetera. That's the beauty of the open API, and we hope it's one of the big selling features. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Right. Um, actually, two things. One is, can you send out the open API, like a link to it on, on Twitter, so people here can see where it is? Because I think, and also, I just want to tie this up to one thing Mike said. Mike said, think big. One people don't know is Myovision has 13,000 municipalities as customers. So that's pretty big. And, you know, you know, these guys are being pretty modest up here. Alex just asked me about the open API. Can I just say, Alex, it's actually the city's call, any of our city clients, to, to use it. It's their call, not ours. And it's their data, not ours. But that's a city by city decision as to how open they're going to make it and what they're trying to do. Stay tuned for some interesting things I think some even Ontario cities might be doing with that. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity.